And I'm joined now by Loretta Mester, who is the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, and at least for half a year, a voter <laughs> on the Open Market Committee. We'll ask about that part a little bit later. But thank you for joining us today. Um, CPI Day. We got mixed news, a little bit of an increase in the headline, a little bit of a decrease in the core. What do you take away from it? Well, Mike, th first, thanks for having me. Um, it doesn't really change my view of where we are. I think, you know, if you think about where we start the year, the economy and monetary policy are both in a good place. To inflation today is in a much better place than a year ago, and we've really seen this discernible progress on the inflation. But the December CPI report shows that the job isn't done yet and that we're yeah, on the FOMC, as you know, are committed to finish the job um, of getting inflation back to our 2% target. But, but the important thing to realize is that that disinflation that's been happening has happened while the labor market conditions remain healthy. So that's given us an opportunity, I think, to, to really you know, look at where the economy is going, how it's going to evolve um, at the beginning of the year, and really assess right, whether the economy is evolving as um, we expect it to. My own forecast is that we'll continue to see inflation move down this year. We won't get to our 2% goal this year, but we'll see continued progress. Um, and we'll see continued progress in the product side of the market of getting things into better balance and on the labor market, getting supply and demand into better balance there. So I think we're in a good spot to really assess um, conditions as they come in and, and to really evaluate um, the balance of risks around both of parts of our mandate. And so I, I'm kind of, you know, obviously we don't want to see the progress in inflation stall out, um, but I don't think this report um, suggests that's happening. I, it just suggests we have more work to do um, and we're committed to do it. Housing is one of the more interest-sensitive sectors, and yet shelter prices have gone up. Uh, do you have a problem with housing, and uh, are, are the delayed lags maybe going to hit it? Uh, what's happening there? I mean, housing is complicated because of two things that have happened, obviously. Supply has been constrained. Um, this was before the pandemic, even. There was constrained supply of housing, and now the pandemic exacerbated that. At the same time, demand for housing changed during the pandemic as well, as people wanted to move move or have a larger house. So the, the, the typical play of higher interest rates in the housing market has been affected by supply and demand conditions that are not typical. I do think we're going to need to see housing inflation continue to move down. We're going to need to see goods inflation continue to move down. We're going to need to see shelter um, core shelter, X housing continue to move down inflation and that. All three of those components are going to need to see more progress. And there's research here at the Cleveland Fed that suggests you can't take one of those out. We're going to have to see that. And we'll likely need to see some adjustment in wages. Although we have seen wage growth um, come down again to be much more in line with a 2% well, inflation. There are some people who look at uh, the wage numbers that we saw in the employment numbers last Friday and the CPI today in terms of real earnings and uh, the Atlanta Fed wage tracker, 5.7%. Uh, what are the chances that wages are going to push inflation back up again? Well, you know, you talk to district contacts um, and wage setters. And what they do say is there's been discernible, like it, the labor market they would characterize as still tight, but it's not nearly as tight as it was before. There's still, you know, de jobs that demand higher wages, but the rate of increase of wages has come down. So again, we see the adjustment coming. You know, if you look at a lot of different indicators in the labor market, what you see is that supply and demand are coming into better balance. Part of that supply, the labor force participation rate has gone up. People are coming back into the labor market, which is great. I think that's a really good development. Um, and that's helped us um, in a number of ways because it basically, we've been able to do the disinflation at the same time, labor market conditions remain healthy, and that's made us not have to face a hard trade-off there. We, have, we knew what the job was. The job one was to get that inflation that was exorbitant under control, 
we have had good progress there, but we just have more work to do there. But this year is going to be one about really looking at the balance now between both parts of our mandate. And so we're going to be focused on, and I certainly will be focused on making sure that we continue to get inflation on a sustainable and timely path back to 2% while we can maintain healthy labor market conditions. You mentioned district contacts. I'm wondering what they're telling you about their pricing power now, whether they intend to keep trying to get uh, some additional price margin uh, as, as we go along, or whether they, they have tapped out on price increases because customers are pushing back. So we hear mix, um, as you would expect, right? So we definitely have had our, our uh, contacts tell us that pricing pressures have eased and from their side in terms of their input prices, they're come down. But also their ability to pass on uh, past increases has been, so it's harder now, right? Customers are pushing back, not uniformly. Um, so some firms have been able to maintain pricing power, but there's fewer firms that say, you know, we, we're not getting pushed back. They have to sort of work to get those price increases in. But at the same time, they've been able to maintain their margins because you've seen goods prices and input prices come down. And so, you know, wages haven't come down that much, but in terms of other input costs, they have come down, so firms have been able to maintain their margins. We're getting mixed pictures as well from indicators like uh, initial jobless claims, which have been flat on a seasonally adjusted basis, but on a non-seasonally adjusted basis, have spiked in the last few weeks. I'm wondering what your business contacts in the district are telling you about their plans for their labor force. Are they hiring? Are they status quo, or are they beginning to think they might have to let some people go? So we're not hearing much at all about letting people go. I mean, you do hear from bankers that, you know, in areas where they're not making a lot of loans, like mortgages, they've already reduced staff there. But there isn't the kind of staff reductions that one would expect to see if the economy was slowing materially. A lot of our firms um, are still looking for workers. They're still looking for workers, especially with hard-to-find skills. But they do say there's more applications um, and that fewer of their staff are quitting um, to go look for another job. So the, the conditions are still healthy. Um, they still have plans to hire in areas where they need workers. Um, and they don't really have plans to lay, lay off any workers at this point. They're, you know, their order books still look pretty decent. You know, one thing that did happen is because it was so hard to find workers and all the effort that went into, we do still continue to hear from firms that say, we're going to do what we have to do to keep, keep our workers on staff um, because it's just so costly to the firm if we lose workers and then we need to go back into the market to hold back. So that's a good thing in the labor market in terms of keeping people attached to the labor market. And that's why I have, you know, I in my own, you know, baseline forecast, I have the unemployment rate, which is extremely low right now, ticking up a little bit, but not really moving up that appreciably. And that's what I mean by we can get inflation down um, by continuing to keep some restrictiveness in our monetary policy, but we can also have the labor market remain health healthy as we do that. Uh, Janet Yellen, you know her, and she knows a little something about monetary policy, uh, said last week that the economy has achieved essentially a soft landing. Would you agree or would you push back? I think we're aiming to achieve a soft landing, and I think the incoming information that we've seen and how the economy has evolved has been consistent with that. But, you know, when you look out, there are some risks around the forecast. Uh, and, of course, my forecast is basically a soft landing. And so you wouldn't want to say, okay, job done, we're, we're on a good path to a soft landing. It's, it's basically made, you know, made, the, made it. We just have to keep attuned to the fact that you know, we need to calibrate our monetary policy so that we are achieving the soft landing. And we have to be attuned to risks around that and risks to both sides of our mandate. I mean, in some sense, last year, it was the inflation part of the mandate had to have our focus. Now, as the economy has come into better balance, right, the risks have become more in balance as well in terms of both sides of our mandate. And I think that's the job this year, is to make sure that we're calibrating our policy to maintain healthy labor markets, even as we continue 
the process to get inflation back to 2%. Okay, if you're calibrating your policy, how do you calibrate it? Uh, market thinks that May is the most likely month, but there's still a very good chance that you might cut uh, rates in March. Uh, where are you? Well, I mean, it's hard to predict the future, as you know, um, and it's really going to be dependent on how the economy evolves. I think March is probably a, too early in my estimation um, for a rate decline because I think we need to see some more evidence. I think the December CPI report just shows there's more work to do. And that work is going to take restrictive monetary policy. But I do think that as we see continuing disinflation and we could get more evidence that is convincing that inflation is on a sustainable downward path to two percent then I think, you know, we'll have that conversation about, okay, is it time now when we look at inflation, but also importantly, inflation expectations, right? Is it time now to move the inflation, or move our Fed funds rate when monetary policies start that process of moving it back to a neutral rate? And I, what I would say is I view sort of the soft landing scenario Right, as being the, the most likely, but I do think there's risks around it and we have to be attuned to both sides of the mandate. So a reduction in the funds rate that is is because we try to keep monetary policy well calibrated to what's happening on the inflation side of the mandate yeah. and employment side, that's different than having to cut the rate because we're heading into a recession. So, you know, rate it decreases that keep the real rate, you know not from rising. So when inflation and inflation expectations begin to come down, right, if you didn't do anything to your funds rate, you'd actually be sort of, you know, passively saying a tighter policy. That's the part of the evaluation that we're going to have coming up. But right now, the evaluation, I think, is, and the policy evaluation is, how long are we needing to keep interest rates and monetary yeah. policy at this restrictive stance? The next phase will be about you know, okay, is it is it now we've seen the conditions we need to start reducing um, the funds rate and reducing our funds rate back to a more neutral stance? I don't think we're there yet. I would like to see more evidence that the economy is progressing as we expect it to, as I expect it to, before we can do that. Well, let me ask you this. In, in terms of timing, Lori Logan says the Fed should begin to talk about tapering QT. John Williams says no. Which side would you be on? Well, I, you know, I can never say we shouldn't be talking about some issue, right, because I think this is something that's going to be coming up. Um, you know, John, I think, rightly pointed out um, when he gave his remarks earlier this week that the, the you know, the balance sheet reduction is going as it's been planned. And we did announce when we announced that start of that in May, the plan in May 2022, that at some point as the balance sheet and reserves come down, we're going to want to sort of reduce the pace of the reduction and, you know, normalize. But we're still, we still have a lot of reserves in the system. So we don't have to do that imminently at all. I think there's time. And we'll be, I'm sure this year will be when we start having the conversations of what that plan would look like. And as we also committed to, is we'll make sure that um, market participants and the public know what the plan is well before we implement it. Well, we can certainly help you with that. We, we want to welcome you back quite often between now and the end of June when you leave the Fed. Thank you very much to Loretta Mester, the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland.